JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week uh, March the 8th until March the 12th. I am Harala Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week we have two central banks deciding on monetary policy, and those are the ECB and the Bank of Canada. Following the latest rally in bond yields, ECB officials sounded concerned, and thus it would be interesting to see whether they will signal more action soon. With regards to the Bank of Canada, latest data have been on the weak, uh, on the weak side, and thus we expect a more dovish language than previously. In the US, rising inflation may add more fuel to the latest rise in, uh, in yields. Uh, finally, for, uh, on Friday from the UK, we get the monthly GDP data for, uh, for January. But uh, let's uh, take things now from the beginning. On Monday, today, there are no major events on the eco or economic releases on uh, the schedule. On Tuesday, the calendar appears uh, relatively light as well. During the Asian session, we have Japan's final GDP for the fourth quarter, which is expected to confirm its preliminary estimate of 3% quarter over quarter. China's trade balance for February is also due to be released, and uh, the forecast suggests that the nation's surplus, uh, surplus has uh, narrowed. Later in the day, we get the final um, GDP data for the fourth quarter from the Eurozone as well, and expectations are for a confirmation of the second estimate of uh, minus 0.6% quarter over quarter. On Wednesday, we have a central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of Canada. At its prior meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates and the pace of its uh, QE purchases unchanged, disappointing those expecting a small cut or even an increase in quantitative easing. Officials also noted that as the governing council gains uh, confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of net purchases of government of Canada bonds will be adjusted as required, which suggests uh, that the next uh, policy step for Bank of Canada may be tapering quantitative easing. However, the employment report for, for January disappointed with the unemployment rate rising to 9.4% from 8.9%, and the net change in employment showing that the economy has lost 212.8 thousand jobs. What's more, although the CPIs for January came in better than expected, they still stayed below the Bank of Canada's inflation aim of 2%, while last week, GDP data showed that the Canadian economy has slowed more than anticipated in December. Thus, with that in mind, we don't believe that tapering may be on the cards for the months to come. We expect Bank of Canada officials to sound more dovish this time around, diminishing expectations on that front, something that could hurt the Canadian dollar. That said, we expect any retreat in the loony to be temporary. With oil prices surging after the decision from OPEC and its allies uh, to not increase output, the loon is likely to stay supported as well, especially against the yen, given that the Bank of Japan is pledged to keep its long-term government bond yields uh, near zero. As uh, for Wednesday's data, during the Asian morning, we, we have China CPI and PPI for February. The CPI rate is forecast to have slid to minus 0.4% uh, year over year from minus 0.3%. While the PPI one is anticipated to have rallied to 1.5% year over year from 0.3%. Later in the day, we get inflation data for February from the US as well. 
Given the latest uh, surge in bond yields, which has been attributed to fears over high inflation in the not too distant future, this data set may attract special attention this time around. The headline rate is forecast to have risen to 1.7% year over year from 1.4%, while the core one is anticipated to have held steady at 1.4% year over year. In our view, rising headline inflation may add to concerns over high inflation and thereby push yields higher. As a result, the US dollar could strengthen and equities uh, could slide. Having said all that, though, we stick to our guns that the decline in equities may be a corrective phase. The reason is that the Fed has noted that they will not tighten policy even if, even, even if inflation overshoots 2% in the months to come. They clearly said that they expect such a spike to be temporary and that inflation will rise and stay above 2% for some time, which is the goal for the beginning of normalization in the years after 2023. As a result, we expect fears over high inflation to ease in the foreseeable future, which may allow equities and other uh, risk-linked assets to rebound. As for the dollar, it may, it may come under selling interest on more signs that the Fed is likely to stay accommodative for longer than previously assumed. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the ECB. Despite the lockdown measures around the Eurozone at the press conference following the latest ECB meeting, President Lagarde uh, said that the downside risks to the economic outlook are now less pronounced, making, in, making investors skeptical over further easing. However, following the latest rally in bond yields, ECB officials have been worried, noting that the rise has been unwarranted as the Eurozone's economic recovery is still fragile and the vaccination pro process has been much slower than in the UK and the US. Rising bond yields in Europe have partly spilled over from US uh, markets reacting to President Biden's uh, massive uh, fiscal stimulus. Therefore, it will be interesting to see whether the ACMB will turn dovish again, perhaps signaling that more easing may be required soon, or whether they will just say that the situation is worth uh, monitoring closely. With the US dollar having the tendency to benefit from rising US yields, we believe that Euro dollar may be poised to slide if indeed the ACMB shows intention to react. Finally, on Friday, market participants may turn their gaze to UK data. The UK monthly GDP for January is coming out, but no forecast is currently available. We also get the nation's industrial and manufacturing production, as well as the trade balance for the same month. Industrial production and manufacturing production are forecast to have slid 0.5% month over month and 0.7% month over month, respectively, after rising 0.2% and 0.3% in December. While the trade balance is forecast to show that the nation's deficit has narrowed. In our view, potentially sliding industrial production and, manufa and manufacturing production increase the chances uh, for a contractionary GDP print, but bearing in mind that the UK has been in full uh, lockdown uh, uh, during the month of uh, January, this may not come as a surprise. As we stick to our guns that with the vaccination proceeding very well in the UK and with the Bank of England officials being aligned with the relaxed views of the Fed over the rally in bond yields around the globe, the pound may continue performing well, especially against the yen. That's because, as we already noted, the Bank of Japan's policy is to keep its, government, uh, its government bond yields close to zero. As uh, for the rest of uh, Friday's uh, releases, Germany's final CPIs uh, for February are forecast to confirm their preliminary estimates, while Eurozone's industrial production is anticipated to have rebounded 0.3% month over month in January after contracting 1.6% in December. From Canada, we get the employment report for February. The unemployment rate is forecast uh, to have ticked down to 9.3 from 9.4%, while the employment change is expected to show that the economy has gained 52.5 thousand jobs after losing 212.8 thousand in January. In the US, the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for March is coming out and the forecast points to an increase to 78 from 76.8. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. 
If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.